The Romans also adopted Greek religious customs and imported other gods and goddesses, like Vena Ericina in 215 BCE and Kybele, Magna Mater in 204 BCE from Phrygia. The Roman authors of the time consulted the Sibylline books, Phetic texts guarded by a priesthood of women who live in various cities in the Mediterranean and Mesopotamia. This priesthood, Quindecimir Sacris Faciundus, consisted of two patrician pontiffs who consulted these women for oracles. According to Roman tradition, the oldest collection of Sibylline books appears to have been made about the time of Solon and Cyrus on Mount Ida in the Trode. It was attributed to the Hellespontine Sibyl and was preserved in the Temple of Apollo at Gurgis. The collection passed to Erythrae, where it became famous as the oracles of the Erythrean Sibyl. It would appear to have been this very collection that found its way to Cumae and from Cumae to Rome. The Sibylline oracles quoted by the Roman Jewish historian Josephus in the first century, as well as other numerous Christian writers of the second century, including Thenagoras of Athens, who, in a letter addressed to Marcus Aurelius in 176, quoted verbatim a section of the extant oracles in the midst of a lengthy series of other classical and pagan references such as Homer and Hesiod, stating several times that these works should already be familiar to the Roman Emperor. Copies of the actual Sibylline books from 76 BCE were still in the Roman temple at this time. The oracles are nevertheless thought by modern scholars to be an anonymous compilation that assumed their final form in the 5th century. They are a miscellaneous collection of pagan, Jewish, and Christian texts, which portents of future disasters that may illustrate the confusion about the Sibyls that were accumulated among Christians of late antiquity. The Sibylline tradition would continue through even the days when Rome moved to Constantinople and became a Christian empire, and would continue until the fall of Constantinople all the way in the 16th century. The Sibylline books would be the one thread that connects modern Rome to ancient Rome. A major priest of the Roman religion, the Rex Sacrorum, and his wife, Regina Sacrorum, known in English as the King and Queen of Sacred Things, were the highest official status in the religion of Rome, and they were selected by the Pontifex Maximus, the high priest, who was voted democratically in the Senate. The last democratically elected Pontifex Maximus was Julius Caesar in 63 BCE. The title Pontifex Maximus is now used for the Pope. They had three major priesthoods, led by three high priests. The Flamen Martialis, the priest of Mars. The Flamen Coronilus, the priest of Curinus, and later Romulus. And the Flamen Dialis, the priest of Jupiter. The Sali, or Salian priests, were leaping priests of Mars in ancient Roman religion, supposed to have been introduced by King Numa Pompilus. According to legend, Numa established the Salae, which honored the god Mars, while Tullius Hostilius established the Salae Colonae, which honored the god Quirinus. An origin among the Etruscans is attributed to a founding by Morius, the king of the Vii. The Salae are also given an origin in connection with Dardanus and the Samothracian mysteries and the Salius, who came to Italy with Evander, and in the Aeneid, competed in the funeral games of Anchises. Indeed, in Book 8 of the Aeneid, on the land of King Evander, Aeneas is entertained by the Salii during a feast, who are commemorating the fame of Hercules. 
they would select 12 young boys to serve four-year terms as Salai. And when one of them left, they would replace him with another one. The Vestal Virgins were priestesses of Vesta, virgin goddess of Rome's sacred hearth and its flame. They were chosen before puberty from a number of suitable candidates, freed from any legal ties and obligations to their family birth, and enrolled in Vesta's priestly college of six priestesses. They were supervised by a senior Vestal, but chosen and governed by Rome's leading male priest, the Pontifus Maximus. During the time of Augustus, they would finish their terms as priestesses and would then be given a pension, land, and oftentimes strategically married to some Greek, Gaelic, or Egyptian royals, which would strengthen the government in occupied lands outside of Italy. Political, military, and civil actions were sanctioned by the priests known as the augurs and the Herospices. Historically, augury, divination through the monitoring of the flight of birds and lightning in the sky, performed by a priest of the College of Augurs on behalf of senior magistrates. The practice itself likely comes from the neighboring region of Etruria, where Etruscan augurs were highly respected as officials. Magistrates were empowered to conduct augury as required for the performance of their official duties. Magistracies included senior military and civil ranks, which were therefore religious offices in their own right, and magistrates were directly responsible for peace and the prosperity of Rome. A herospex was a person trained in the practice of a form of divination that checks the entrails of a sacrificed animal for omens related to politics and war. Over time, the Greeks slowly began to inhabit the southern region of Italy and Sicily. Thinkers like Parmenides and Pythagoras would bring Orphism and Ionian philosophy to the Italian peninsula. The Etruscans dominated culture in the north and the Greeks dominated culture in the south. And the combination of both would make up Roman society as we know it. And that wraps up our deep dive into the captivating history of Italy from the intriguing tale of the legendary founders of Rome. Romulus and Remus, to the mystical and fascinating cult of Bacchus. We've journeyed through these remarkable narratives that have shaped this extraordinary nation. Remember, history isn't just about facts and dates, but about understanding how the past has influenced our present and the diverse cultures and beliefs that have come together to form the world we live in today. If you enjoyed today's expedition into Italy's rich past and you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. We'd love to hear your thoughts about what we've covered today. So please share your comments below. And if there's another topic or region you'd like to explore, let us know. Stay curious, stay informed, and you have ascertained true gnosis.